As a child, I never cared for things that girls usually do. The only things I wanted were a jackknife, a gimlet, and pieces of wood. These are the words of Margaret E. Knight, inventor. She's the last in our series. This is Stephanie Kwame from the Cat Academy. Margaret E. Knight, or Maddie as she was known, was born on Valentine's Day in 1838 in York, Maine. Her parents were so good to her, they didn't mind her following her nature or her passion. She didn't like the toys that young girls played with. She preferred her invention notebook where she uh, created and drew inventions. And she loved her father's tool chest and would carry it around. And she actually started creating fast sleds and kites for her younger brothers. This is a quote. I was famous for my kites. My sleds were the envy and admiration of all the boys in town. So you can see she had a competitive spirit as well. Unfortunately, her father passed away when she was very young, and like a lot of young children in that age, she had to go to work in a textile mill, and that really ended her education. Unfortunately, uh, children ended up in these mills because it, uh, of the economy, basically, and because there was no laws to protect them, and they worked in horrible conditions, in extreme heat, dust and dirt, and around big equipment that could easily injure them. Uh, the mills didn't run off of electricity, they ran off of the power of a river, so you would find them by rivers and waterfalls. When she was just 12 years old, uh, Maddie witnessed uh, a little girl almost getting killed from one of the shuttles flying off of the textile looms and hitting her, almost hitting her. And so she decided to come up with something that would prevent that. So she came up with metal, metal guards and a shutoff uh, valve that they finally started using in her mill and that ended up, by the time she was only 13, they used that shutoff valve and that uh, a metal guard in all of the equipment textile machines in uh, her area. She went to work for a paper bag company and wherever she went to work she was always looking for a way to come up with something better, so how to improve things. So she was an observer of things that went around her and when she saw a need she would fill it. And she thought uh, as she saw people filling the V-shaped bags that they uh, made there, how difficult that was because they couldn't stand on their own. Someone had to hold one side of the bag and then you would fill it with the other and they often broke and fell over. And she thought, wouldn't it be nice to have a flat bottom bag that could sit on its own and you could fill it with, you could use both hands. And so she came up with the idea and then she developed a machine to produce the brown paper bag. And we still use that today. The machine would fold it, glue it, and it would come out perfect the other end. Unfortunately, there was a spy uh, in when she was making her prototype. His name was Charles Annum, and he basically preempted her. And because he had seen the women building her prototype, he applied for and received a patent on Knight's device before she uh, applied for the patent. And it's interesting, she, she uh, decided to sue him. She had never had a patent before, and this was her first patent, and she, she felt very strongly about it. So when they were in court, they asked Adam, what, how come, he, how, what could he say about he being the inventor of this device? And his defense is that no woman could possibly invent a device like this, which is kind of funny in our day and age. And of course, she had all of the backup uh, files. She, I mean, she had all the backup uh, drawings and everything. So she basically ended up getting a patent on July 11th, 1871. It's interesting when you look at a paper bag with lit from behind, it's like an origami project of folding. And you might try making or folding the paper bag so that machine had to fold it, glue it, and send it out. So she teamed up with a businessman and they established the Eastern Paper Bag Company after she got her patent. She went on to do a lot of different things, but everything she did, she rose to the occasion, invented something that was terrific, and uh, she had a great mind, a genius mind. And by the time she died, she died at age 76 in 1914, she held 27 patents and probably invented at least twice that uh, many devices that she didn't uh, do patents on. Her last... Uh, uh, 
thing was developing a uh, things for a rotary engine. She developed a sleeve valve uh, automobile, and that's their her automobile there. It had a nice wide wheel base, which would make it very stable. And she also created a number of other things for the uh, rotary engine and, and holds patents on those. The car was a little bit expensive. It was about six thousand dollars, but it was a very very nice car. So what can we learn from Margaret E. Knight? And she was definitely born with what she called her nature. And her nature was a passion to design and an eye on how she could make things better. And also, along with the other people we studied, the condition of your youth or education does not determine your success. They all really had difficult beginnings. They, as some of them suffered from lack of education as well, and that didn't seem to deter them from their passion. She also was a person that, when she saw a problem, she didn't turn her, you know, turn the other way and ignore it, or say, you know, you better be careful about that machine because the spindles fly off of it. She would, she did her best to fix the problem, and so being observant is uh, very important, I think, in um, inventing something. But she was definitely a genius inventor. She's known as the female Thomas Edison. And the reason we brought you this series is that we wanted to get you inspired and excited to enter our two national contests. We have one for SolidWorks that is design something, make a difference using SolidWorks. And um, it doesn't have to be big or important. We talked about how a paperclip was a great invention and it made a difference. We also have a repeat of the lead dream home contest using ARCHICAD. Our students did so well. They did amazing designs, in, uh, and it's uh, all about being green and sustainable. The contests start right after winter break, and they end on the last day of February 2014. And winners receive uh, tablets and notebooks, so it's definitely worth it to enter the contest. So I would say you need to start learning SOLIDWORKS and ARCHICAD right now. And you can go on our instructor portal. Your instructor can give you his login if you would like. And we have step-by-step -step lessons to help you learn SOLIDWORKS or ARCHICAD. And they're easy to follow, and many students can learn it on their own. So that might be um, a way you can do it, too. You can download or get an inst a student copy if your instructor puts in your email address, and you can work on it during winter break. I leave you with a Margaret E. Knight quote. I was only following what came naturally to me. As a child, I never cared for things that girls usually do. I was not like other girls, but wisely concluded that I couldn't help it and sought further consolation from my tools. I'm not surprised at what I've done. I'm only sorry I couldn't have had as good a chance as a boy. So you can see that she had some discrimination against her because she was a female in a male-dominated field. Thanks for listening.